I am Maria Fresh, a religious sister, and I want to ask Mr. Sahini, Ashok Sahini, Shahani, why did you translate it, uh, the book Raja into Marathi? At last, a simple question. <laughs> Well, I translated it. One thing is uh, because I like like the book. Another thing was uh, it was some kind of an atonement because uh, Taslima had the courage to write the kind of book she wrote. The minorities being put to trouble, a lot of uh, suffering, torture in her own country, which is a Muslim majority country. Whereas. Almost the same, or maybe to a lesser degree, there may be some difference. The same things happened in the December and January riots in Bombay. But I found that uh, no literary person here. I come. I'm. I'm a Ma- Maharashtrian. No Marathi author has uh, had the courage to say that it has put us all to shame. The Slima had that courage, and she did it. Uh, question to Dr. Zakir Naik. The fundamentalists of Bangladesh have thems- are themselves responsible for bringing uh, Taslima Nasrim into the limelight by announcing hefty prices on her head. If they had instead ignored her and allowed her to have a say, uh, this issue would not have risen at all and perhaps it would not have, uh, not have come here to uh, discuss this uh, subject. <laughs> Brother, that's a very good question. That if the so-called, in inverted commas, Muslim fundamentalists, so-called, I say, if they would not have announced the prize on her head, we would not have gathered here today. I agree with you. But you put the blame on the Muslim fundamentalist, I put the blame on the media. Difference of opinion. If, even if, an obscure organization like BSSP, Bangladesh Sahaba Sainik Parishad, who knew of it? No one. Even if the leader of that organization, Maulana Habibur Rahman, and I do know, brother, that somebody has called for that sentence. If an obscure person, an insignificant organization, calls for that sentence, why does the Indian media has to highlight it? Front page. Imagine front page news. According to the High Commission, this is I'm quoting from the Delhi newspaper, according to the High Commission of Bangladesh, he said that the amount of news that the Indian media has given to Taslima Nasreen is not even 1% of the news that's there in the Bangladesh newspaper. So, you blame, you ask me, are the Muslim fundamentalists to blame? You may blame them. I would say, even if they are to blame, or whether they are not, irrespective of that, I believe the, the journalists of India and the papers of India, they are much more wiser. So they should not have highlighted it, and neither would be here to discuss the matter. Yes, brother. The Indian media has highlighted this issue in order to save her life because she is the only person, she is a woman and she is helpless in, in front of all these uh, religious fanatics. So the Indian media is only trying to save her life. That's right. Indian... Indian... Wait, wait, please, please, please let me answer, brother, then you can continue the question. Brother, I said the Indian media tried her to save from an obscure organization, insignificant Maulana Habibur Rahman. So today if you hear someone in the train saying, I'm going to kill the Prime Minister, you're going to give the headlines in your papers. No, just an, it's a rhetoric question, brother. I don't want you to answer. Shh. Brother, brother, bro, please, brother. Brother, brother, you have a right to ask a question later on. Let me complete my answer. So you said the Indian media. See, that's my opinion. My opinion can be wrong, brother. It's my opinion. I'm not saying my opinion has to be right. Some people in the audience may agree with my opinion, some people may not. So I feel that any insignificant person, suppose if maybe the call was given by the leading organization, then you have to think over it. it I'm not commenting on the ban. I'm not commenting on the death call whether it's right or wrong. I'm saying, why did we have to give it headlines? Because for sensationalism. That's what I say. That's my opinion, brother. If you like it, you can take it. If you don't like it, you can refuse it. That's my opinion, brother. I 
द कॉल फॉर द सेंटेंस टू तस्लीमा नसरीन इज नॉट दैट इन सिग्निफिकेंट एज ही इज ट्राइंग टू मेक आउट द कॉल इज बीन गिवन बाय ऑफिशियली बाय द पोलिटिकल पार्टी जमात इस्लामी इन बांग्लादेश I am Professor Hamza Virani. I would like to ask uh, Brother Ashok Sahani that you said that this journalist they have put life of uh, Taslima Nasreen in problem, and he says that Indian media is trying to save the life of Taslima Nasreen. So first, you say as a journalist, I don't know whether you are journalist or not. No, good. So some journalists they have put the life of Taslima Nasreen in danger. and he says that journalists are trying to save the life of uh, taslima nasreen i want to know what is right whether they have put her in problem or they are trying to take out her from the problem the problem is uh, not that simple of course <laughs> the problem is a bit complicated in the way meaning the fundamentalists in bangladesh had been itching for the slimmer head for a long time even earlier to the interview that she gave to statesman and if you ask me my personal opinion they might have been misled by a a, a wrong idea of nationalism because the slima on a way back to dhaka from paris stayed in calcutta and on the top of it said that calcutta is my second home you tell that to anybody um, 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 from shiv sena in bombay for instance if imran comes to bombay and says that bombay is my second home and the people in pakistan are going to be um, 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 bothered about it or even if a person like gavaskar goes to the cancer hospital uh, function then there's a lot of you and cry in the newspapers about why should gavaskar go and you know i mean this is all mixed up that's what i say i mean it's it's a bit complicated but all the same i mean um, since the statesman has not come out with a open apology or open un ba un ba undeterred apology that they had been the cause they have been made the cause for this demand i mean things would have been different मेरा नाम रवि है महानगर से आया हूँ मुझे डॉक्टर व्यास से एक सवाल पूछना है आपने कहा कि हिंदू धर्म में संवाद का बहुत महत्व है मतलब जो लोग खुद को हिंदू समझते हैं उन्होंने संवाद करना जरूरी है अपोजिट विचारों के लोगों से बाला साहब ठाकरे ने नामांतर के सवाल के ऊपर किसी भी दलित से सवाल नहीं किया लाल कृष्ण अडवाणी जी ने बाबरी मस्जिद के मसले पर किसी भी मुस्लिम लोगों से संवाद करने की कोशिश नहीं की कोर्ट की तरफ से हो रही थी वो भी उन लोगों ने नाकारी है क्या आप लोग आपकी दृष्टि में बाला साहेब ठाकरे लालकृष्ण अडवाणी ये लोग हिंदू है सबसे पहले मेरी प्रार्थना यह है कि इट्स बेटर दैट वी डिस्कस प्रिंसिपल्स एंड थियरीज देन वी डिस्कस पर्सन एंड इवेंट्स क्योंकि फिर प्रश्न ही आ जाएगा मैं हिंदू धर्मशास्त्रों की जिम्मेदारी लेने के लिए तैयार हूं संसार भर के सारे हिंदुओं के कार्यों की जिम्मेदारी मैं नहीं ले सकता हिंदू धर्मशास्त्र में कहीं अगर ये बताया गया हो एक मिनट हिंदू धर्मशास्त्रों में कहीं अगर ये बताया गया हो कि जो आपके विरुद्ध विचार वाले हों या जो आपके विचारों को स्वीकार न करें उन सबको आप मार डालिए या उनके अंग छेद कर दीजिए उनको देश निकाला दे दीजिए ऐसा धर्मशास्त्रों में कहीं उल्लेख हो तो आप हमें बताइए उस पर मैं विचार करने के लिए तैयार हूं किन्होंने क्या किया व्यक्तिगत रूप से कौन क्या कर और खासकर आपने जो प्रश्न पूछे हैं बिल्कुल राजनीतिक पार्टियों के बारे में आज की भारत की राजनीति इस प्रकार की है कि मैं उससे दूर रहना ही पसंद करूंगा हालांकि किसी भारतीय नागरिक के लिए या संसार में किसी नागरिक के लिए राजनीति से एकदम दूर रहना बड़ा कठिन है फिर भी 
एक बात भी मैं कहना चाहूंगा कि आप स्वयं अपने आप से ही पूछ लीजिए या ये इस प्रश्न का सबसे ज्यादा सही उत्तर लालकृष्ण आडवाणी या बाल ठाकरे साहब भी दे सकते हैं कि सनातन वैदिक धर्म के हिंदू धर्म शास्त्रों के अनुसार वे अपने को हिंदू मानते हैं या नहीं मैं कौन होता हूँ निर्णय देने वाला हाँ इतनी इतनी देर में शुभ रहा एक बात मैं जरूर कहना चाहूंगा हो सकता है अब तक हम भ्रम में रहा नायक साहब ने जो कहा कि फतवा का केवल ओपिनियन होता है ये आज मैंने जाना अब तक हम लोग ये समझते थे कि फतवा माने किसी धर्माचार्य के द्वारा या किसी उच्च अधिकारी के द्वारा कोई जो आदेश दिया जाए उसको फतवा कहते हैं ऐसा मैं अब तक समझता था हो सकता मैं भूल नहीं रहा हूँ तो ये मेरी भूल हो सकती है इसलिए मैं ये निवेदन करूंगा कि किसी जत्री विशेष के बारे में मेरे पर्सनल ओपिनियन का कोई उपयोग नहीं है यहाँ हम विचार ये कर रहे हैं कि हिंदू धर्म शास्त्रों के अनुसार विरुद्ध विचार वालों के साथ क्या व्यवहार होना चाहिए वहां जब संवाद की बात आती है तो मैंने आपको पहले ही बताया कि हमारे यहाँ पहले हमेशा पूर्व पक्ष और फिर उत्तर पक्ष रखा जाता है आप ये जानते हैं कि दयानंद सरस्वती के समय तक शास्त्रार्थों की धूम मची रहती थी दयानंद सरस्वती शायद प्रारंभिक सुधारकों में से जिनको सुधारक लोग कहते हैं धर्म में परिवर्तन करने वाले जो माने जाते हैं उनमें दयानंद सरस्वती प्रारंभिक लोगों में से थे आप अच्छी तरह से जानते हैं दयानंद सरस्वती के जीवन में और उनके पश्चात भी लगभग 50 वर्षों तक सनातनियों में और आर्य समाजियों में स्थान स्थान पर शहर शहर में गांव गांव में शास्त्रार्थ होते रहे पुस्तकें छपती रही सैकड़ों और हजारों पुस्तकें छपती रही दर्शन शास्त्र में शंकराचार्य रामानाचार्य आदि के विचारों में एक दूसरे के विरोध होते हुए आज तक हजारों पुस्तकें छपी हुई है ये संवाद के ही तो उदाहरण है आज का कोई एक नेता अगर किसी के साथ संवाद बिना किए कोई काम कर देता है तो उसकी जिम्मेदारी आप हिंदू धर्म शास्त्रों पर कैसे डाल सकते हैं क्योंकि अन्यथा भी मैं ये चाह रहा था खासकर सहानी साहब ने जो अपने भाषण में एक बात कही थी कि दे प्रॉब्लम इज दट एवरी रिलीजन हैज ए बुक एंड वी कांट बिलीव इन ए बुक रिटर्न बिफोर थाउजेंड हंड्रेड ईयर्स और थाउजेंड ईयर्स और क्लोर सौ ईयर्स सबसे बड़ी बात यह है कि मेरा निवेदन ये है कि यू आर एट फुल लिबर्टी Not to accept any religion and remain unreligious, but you have no authority or you have no liberty to say that we do believe a dharma and do not believe a dharma granth. Is par ab dhan diyega. Ham nastik rahna ya parlo ko na manna. Iski chhut sabko hai. Aaj ke zamane mein bhi hai, padhe ke zamane mein bhi thi. Lekin aap ye kahein ki ham dharma ko sikar karte hain. लेकिन धर्म का धर्म परिवर्तन करते रहना चाहिए उसके लिए आपको मेरी बात का उत्तर देना पड़ेगा कि धर्म का फल अगर परलोक में मिलता है अगर मैं इसमें इसलिए कह रहा हूं कि जो लोग ये मानते हैं कि धर्म का फल परलोक में मिलता है उनकी ओर से ये प्रश्न है अगर आप ये मानते हैं कि धर्म का फल परलोक में नहीं मिलता धर्म का फल ईश्वर नहीं देता तो धर्म कौन सी चीज है जिसको आप मानना चाहते हैं धर्म है क्या चीज अब मैं आपके प्रश्न पर आता हूं कि कर्म किसे कहते हैं जहां तक हिंदू धर्म शास्त्र का प्रश्न हो सकता है कुछ अन्य संप्रदायों में ऐसा हो कि आप सात छह दिन कुछ भी करें एक दिन किसी पूजा गृह में जाकर पूजा कर लें तो आप धार्मिक बने रह सकते हैं कहीं ऐसा हो तो मैं नहीं जानता हिंदू धर्म शास्त्रों में जहां तक प्रश्न है हमारे यहां प्रातः काल से लेकर रात्रि तक और रात्रि से लेकर प्रातः काल तक चौबीसों घंटे बारहों महीने और जीवन भर शरीर इंद्री मन से जो कुछ चेष्टा जो क्रिया हम करते हैं वो सब करना है और वो सब धर्मशास्त्र के क्षेत्र के अंतर्गत आता है मैं किसी को किस दृष्टि से देख रहा हूं ये भी एक कर्म है अगर मैं अच्छी दृष्टि से पवित्र दृष्टि से देख रहा हूं तो मैं पुण्य कर रहा हूं अगर मैं अपवित्र दृष्टि से किसी पर को देख रहा हूं तो पाप कर रहा हूं उसका भी फल मुझे मिलेगा इसलिए कर्म को आप किसी एक सीमित क्षेत्र में कभी नहीं बांध सकते शरीर इंद्री मन और बुद्धि इन सब के, के जो भी प्रयत्न हैं ये सारे प्रयत्न कर्म हैं और ऐसा कोई प्रयत्न नहीं होता जिसका फल केवल यहां मिलकर रह जाए हर कर्म का फल कुछ न कुछ यहां के बाद भी मिलता है जिनको ईश्वर पर विश्वास न हो 
जिनको परलोक पर विश्वास न हो उनसे हम अलग बात कर सकते हैं आज का मंच मैं समझता हूँ उसके लिए नहीं है अब ये नहीं कहते कि ईश्वर को नहीं मानते उनको हम एकदम छोड़ देंगे हम उन पर भी विचार करने के लिए तैयार है और तर्कों के आधार पर शास्त्रों को छोड़ दीजिए किसी शास्त्र आप पुराण को मत मानिए पुराण को मत मानिए वेद को मत मानिए वाइबिद को मत मानिए फिर भी हम तर्कों से और युक्तियों से ईश्वर को सिद्ध कर सकते हैं ऐसा हमारा विश्वास है आप कोई अलग बैठक उसके लिए बुला सकते हैं लेकिन जो ईश्वर को मानते हैं उनके लिए हमेशा यह प्रश्न है कि जो कुछ कर्म हम कर रहे हैं उसको देख कोई देख रहा है हम अकेले में कभी मैं दो मिनट के लिए मैं चाहूंगा मैं अकेले में हमारे यहाँ प्रसिद्ध है कि एक गुरु ने अपने शिष्यों को पूरा अध्यापन करने के बाद फल दे दिए जाओ एक एक फल ले जाओ ऐसी जगह खा लो जहाँ कोई न देखता हो जब मैं वापस आया तो किसी ने कहा कि मैं एक बंद कमरे में मैंने कमरा बंद कर लिया खा लिया किसी ने कहा मैंने पानी में जाकर खा लिया किसी ने कहा जंगल में जाकर खा लिया एक शिष्य आया जिसने कहा गुरु जी मुझे ऐसी कोई जगह मिली नहीं जहाँ कोई न देख रहा हो इसलिए मैं फल वापस लेकर आ गया हूँ तो ये भावना अगर मनुष्य में है कि हम जो कुछ कर रहे हैं उसे कोई अवश्य देख रहा है और आज अगर हम छूट गए तो भी आगे फल मिलेगा तो ही समाज में व्यवस्था ठीक रह सकती है मैं एक बात और कहना चाहूंगा कि धर्म थोड़ी देर के लिए मान लीजिए कि काल्पनिक हो मान लीजिए हम नहीं मानते काल्पनिक हम तो अत्यंत सत्य मानते हैं पर जैसे कारण मार्क्स ने कहा कि धर्म अफीम की गोली है थोड़ी देर के लिए हम मान भी नहीं कि वो अफीम की गोली है तो भी समाज की सुव्यवस्था के लिए वही अफीम की गोली परम आवश्यक है आप भ्रष्टाचार निवारण नहीं जो भ्रष्टाचार आएगा उसको आप कहां रोकेंगे हाउ लॉन्ग यू कैन गो की पुलिस और पुलिस आज सारी अब व्यवस्था इसलिए हो रही है कि परलोक और ईश्वर पर से लोगों का विश्वास हट गया है धर्म पर से लोगों का विश्वास हो गया है हट गया है केवल अपनी बुद्धि पर लोगों को विश्वास है अगर मैं अपराध करके पुलिस से बच सकता हूं या पुलिस को घूस खिला कर बच सकता हूं या अंत में न्यायालयों में भी कुछ उपद्रव करके या कुछ भी करके मैं नाम नहीं लेना चाहता मैं अगर बच सकता हूं तो अपराध करने में कोई दोष नहीं है ये बुद्धिमुक्ता की बात है ज्यादा बुद्धिमान जो होते हैं वो ज्यादा अच्छे उपाय सोच करके अपने को बचा लेने का प्रयास करते हैं और बचते हैं इसलिए वो सोचने में बच गए अपराधों के बढ़ने का मूल कारण ये है आप जितना अधिक सेकुलरिज्म का प्रचार करते जाएंगे उतना अधिक अपराध बढ़ता चला जाएगा इस पर आप ध्यान दीजिएगा अंततः इन अपराधों को नष्ट करने का एकमात्र उपाय है कि प्रत्येक कर्म पर हम ये ध्यान रखें कि ईश्वर भी उसे देख रहा है मेरा सवाल धर्म मेरा सवाल डॉक्टर व्यास से है आप सनातन सनातन धर्म को रिप्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं यहाँ पर और आपने कहा कि धर्म के अंदर कोई एडिशन नहीं होना चाहिए और मैं आप अच्छा आपने नहीं कहा मुझे आप ये बता सकते हैं कि किसी सनातन धर्म के किसी शास्त्र में हिंदू वर्ड लिखा हुआ है या ये लिखा हुआ है कि ये हिंदू धर्म भी कोई आने वाला है अगर ये नहीं है तो ये सनातन धर्म में ये हिंदू वर्ड कहाँ से आया और ये हिंदू वर्ड सनातन धर्म से किस तरह से रिलेटेड है और वो कहाँ से आया हुआ है ठीक है पहली बात यह है कि हिंदू शब्द आप जो समझ रहे हैं कि वो फारस पारसियों के या फारस वालों के आने के बाद हिंदू शब्द हमारी जाति के लिए प्रचलित हुआ वो थोड़ा आपका भ्रम है कालिका पुराण आदि कुछ ग्रंथों में हिंदू शब्द का पहले से हिंदू विंध्य महाविषण वहां स्पष्ट उल्लेख है हिंदू शब्द की उत्पत्ति आपको संस्कृत के पुराने कोषों में मिल जाती है हिमालय से लेकर इंदु सरोवर तक एक प्रथा रही है शब्द किसी का पहला शब्द और अंतिम शब्द पहला अक्षर अंतिम अक्षर मिलाकर पूरा शब्द बन जाता है आज भी ये प्रथा अन्य भाषाओं डॉक्टर में डी आर लिख देते हैं डॉक्टर का पहला अक्षर डी अंतिम अक्षर आर डी आर का मतलब डॉक्टर एम आर का मतलब मिस्टर वैसे हिमालय से लेकर इंदु सरोवर पर्यंत का जो देश है वो हिंदू देश है इसलिए हिंदू हिंदुओं का जो स्थान है वो हिंदुस्तान है ऐसा उल्लेख पुराणों में और उसके कुछ प्राचीन साहित्य में मिलता है नंबर वन नंबर दो भाषा विज्ञान की दृष्टि अगर आप विचार करें तो सिंधु विदेशी जब यहां आए तो उनको सिंधु नदी सबसे पहले मिली सिंधु के आधार पर सिंधुस्थान बना और सकार का उच्चारण हकार करने की कई भाषाओं में प्रवृत्ति है इसलिए जैसे सप्ताह का हफ्ता सरस्वती का हरहवती वैसे इस आधार पर भी सिंधु का हिंदू बनकर सिंधुस्तान से हिंदुस्तान बन गया है और ये मैंने कभी नहीं कहा कि कोई एडिशन नहीं होना चाहिए मैंने ये कहा कि जो मूल शास्त्रों के सिद्धांत हैं उन सिद्धांतों में परिवर्तन करने का हमें कोई अधिकार नहीं है क्योंकि फल लेने वाले हम नहीं हैं इतना ही मैंने कहा है the word hindu and he said that hindu is a person living in india in hindustan 
But that's a geographical definition. By that, if you agree with that definition, even I'm a Hindu. But what brother was referring to is the theological definition of Hinduism mentioned in the Hindu scriptures, which I being a student of comparative religion, I don't come across any. This definition has also been agreed by Swami Vivekananda that Hindu is a geographical definition, meaning those people living on this side of the Indus Valley civilization. By that, I'm a Hindu. But actual, the religion should be called a Vedantic religion, those who follow the Vedas. And one more clarification regarding you said that I had mentioned that fatwa is the opinion. Yes, I did mention it. But if that opinion is given by the judge sitting on the seat of judgment, it is taken as a judgment and a verdict. So fatwa can also mean a verdict. Let me clarify. And Quran clearly states in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 59, that if you are in doubt, ask the person who knows. So if the Quran speaks about medicine, and if you have a doubt, you will take fatwa from a doctor. I have a right to give fatwa when Quran is talking about medicine. I have a right. I have a right to opinion. But if it's talking about fiqh and masail, I can give fatwa, but it will have no value. You'll have to go to a faqih. In the same way, if the fatwa is given by a judge sitting on the judgment seat, it is taken for verdict. But given by a layman, it is just a layman's opinion. sister has asked a similar question. She said, we have talked enough of Taslima Nasreen Zajja. Now we're going to talk on the satanic verses that I can give a lecture on that, which I don't intend doing. Regarding the verdict, again, it comes to the same thing as I mentioned earlier, the verdict does not change. Same. But if you want me to throw some light on the satanic verses, I do agree that Salman Rushdie has abused our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He has abused his wife, etc., who are the Umm al the, the mothers of all the Muslims. He has. But what I feel to realize that why hasn't some scholar thrown some light on what else has written on that book, which I will give my opinion. Why I'm giving the opinion? Because I have read that book, Satanic Verses. I have read that. If you want to read, you can go to London or America. There's a copy freely available. I had been to London and America. Just giving a gist on what Salman Rajdi, besides he abusing the Muslim characters, he has even abused his protectors. The London people, the British government who have protected them, he has abused them. On the very first page, or you could say the first page of the first chapter, actually it's page number three, he has abused the Londoners. He says, London by the first page of first chapter, that's page number three. London by and he abuses. I can't use that word, believe me, I can't use that word. I tried to use that word when I was when I was having a dialogue or debate with a priest while I was quoting the Bible in Deuteronomy, chapter number 23, verse number 2, which says, the dash, the dash, I don't want to say the word, the dash, shall not enter the congregation until the tenth generation. If you want to know the exact word, I'll just give a small brief joke that when there was a party going on, everyone who wanted something on the table did some rhyming. So the Duke said, Queen so fine, pass the wine. The one person whose English pronunciation is not bad, and he wanted to have some custard. So he said, Duke the dash, pass the custard. So now you know what the word is. If you don't know, you can refer to the Bible. It is mentioned three times. And Salman Rajdi used that word 29 times. 29 times. Imagine. And the irony is that the British government speaks of freedom of speech. According to an article in the Daily News in London, 22nd of May, 1989, there was a big article called for ban. Ban for whom? Not for Salman Rajdi. Called for ban for Mickey, he was an actor from America. Mickey, he came and he used the four letter word for the policies of Margaret Thatcher. I sure you don't want me to repeat that four letter word. It is father, uncle, cousin, king. Still, if you don't know, ask the person who knows. He used that four letter word to describe the policies of Margaret Thatcher and that, and the MPs, the Tories, of that parliament, they said, call for ban. Now Salman Rajdi uses that same word. Same word, but makes it active. Active, adding ing, ing. Four letter, he makes it seven letter. And in one paragraph, on page number 270, in one paragraph, he uses that word four times. 
Call it a word, ing, making the acting, describing the activities of Margaret Thatcher, and it goes down the throat of the Britishers. Why is this biasness? An American actor uses a call it a word for Margaret Thatcher's policy, you call for ban. And none of those people who supported Salman Rushdie raised their voice to support that American actor. Why? Why the double policy? Because he uses it four times, making it active. And if you read that book, he's used that word 52 times, one for each week, 52 times. I've read the book, therefore I'm saying. And five times he's used only that four-letter word. You can give, you can make a dictionary out of it. In a, in American, in allies, all these, you can make a dictionary out of it. And, and, he has even abused the Prime Minister, the ex-Prime Minister, who was the Prime Minister at that time. And he says that, he says that, and he calls it a nickname, like he does for all the characters. He is called the Chamcha. He tokenifies himself as Chamcha or as the Jibri or Spoonu. He calls Margaret Thatcher Maggie. And what he says? Torture. You know what the meaning of torture? Torture means Thatcher. He says torture and full stop. One word sentence, beautiful. I do appreciate Salman Rushdie for his pen. One word sentence, torture, full stop. Maggie the five letter word. I don't repeat it. It's a female dog. He says torture, full stop. Maggie the five letter word. Uh, uh, that's right, I'm answering the question, brother. I'm, because she said that she wants me to throw some light on the satanic verses and on the verdict of Salman Rajdi. Regarding the verdict, it remains the same as my previous answer. Regarding throwing light, I'm throwing light, brother. If you give me the permission, just a couple of more minutes. So that, the, how many of you out here knew all this was mentioned in the satanic verses? Oh, very good. Two, three. So, I'm three. So, did you know all this was mentioned? Do you know torture referred to Thatcher? Oh, very good. We have intelligent people out here, but the masses don't know. So, fine, fine. But please, please let me answer, brother. Let me answer. I do agree that people will say that Margaret Thatcher, she's an iron lady. She won't get moved. She's very strong. I do agree. Even if you call her that pilot award, even if you call her a female dog, she won't get moved. But imagine if you go to her son, Mark, Mark Thatcher, you might have seen him on TV playing soccer with the rugby. If you go to Mark and say, Mark, Salman Rushdie has called you an SOB, son of a file at a word, I'm sure Mark will hammer you. He will not believe in freedom of speech. If you tell Mark that Salman Rushdie has called you an SOB, son of a file at a word, he will surely hammer you. Even the British people are sensitive. But their sensitivism is... Everyone has different levels of sensitivism. Some people may be sensitive, some people may be sensitive in particular words. Like for example, if you go on the road, brother, people on the roadside, they keep on abusing each other. Mark your par bhin the same word which Salman Rajdi has used in his... Imagine he uses Hindi word, bain and four letter word. So, if those people, if you abuse that pi, he will not, he's not sensitive at all, because he's used to abuse. But if you call him in a very plain language, which is less insulting than the abuse, and tell that maybe your mother is a prostitute, even that roadside man will feel bad, he will feel hurt. Every man is sensitive depending upon his individual field. And the British government which calls for freedom of speech, it does not believe in freedom of speech. Because when Sheikh Zidad said that give me five minutes on the BBC to quote only the verses which Salman Rajdi has said and I will give 50,000 pounds to any charitable organization, they refused. ABC, American Broadcasting Corporation, they refused. He said I will pay $50,000 only to quote you believe in freedom of speech? I will quote Salman Rajdi's book, give me $50,000. They didn't agree. This is as far as freedom of speech goes. And regarding the verdict, sister, the answer is same as I gave for Tasima Nasreen. <clears throat> I'd like to say something and very briefly. As I said earlier, um, the fatwa of Khomeini is inexcusable. If it could be revoked, or rather it was, it could be revoked as that recent news item said about five years later now, since this thing, it could have been revoked five weeks later. But it's not been revoked because of political reasons. That's the first thing, as I keep on insisting, in many of these religious quarrels, look for the political angle in it. That's the first. Secondly, uh, I don't think that Rashidi himself is entirely to be excused either. He has deliberately adopted what I would call a very Western arrogant position. 
Now, if you believe in freedom of speech without responsibilities, be ready to take the reaction from wherever. So instead of going underground, I would have said, with all your money, stand up and be counted. If I abuse you in public, I should be prepared for a kind of reaction from you and not go underground. The very government that he abused earlier is the one that is protecting him. I think there's a great anomaly over here, but realize that there's no logic in these matters. Realize for one thing that there is, uh, in the Anglo-Saxon world particularly, a growing uh, feeling that militant Islam in the Islamic fundamentalism has now taken the place as enemy number one after the death of communism. Communism is no longer now uh, any kind of military threat. Instead, it is now a militant Islam. You know all these things from the Gulf War, you know, Iran, uh, and so on and so forth. And that's why, as I said a little earlier, you must understand that a lot of fundamentalism comes from, firstly, a certain vision of society which is not shared by a Western secular ethos. Secondly, that a lot of countries in West Asia particularly are reacting to a lot of Western arrogance and reacting to a post-colonial e uh, epoch, whereas they would like to stand on their feet as independent nations and realize that they can't. Even the rich Arab countries cannot. You know that, for the matter of fact. So understand that a lot of these gut reactions to Rushdie as a, a symbol or George Bush as another symbol or Israel as another symbol, all these things come in a, in a vast and very complicated global scenario in which now Islamic fundamentalism is the latest uh, whipping boy which earlier, for example, it would have been Russia, the, the Soviet bloc and so on. Enough. Uh, this is positively the last question. Yeah. I entirely agree with you, and uh, the, 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 the point is uh, uh, just this, that uh, if somebody is to be revered, then he has to be put beyond criticism. I don't think we live in a society in which uh, that principle would work. I think everybody, everything needs criticism. Everything can be criticized. Why not? Why not? Whether it is religion, whether it's a religious person, whether it's king or whether it's, I mean, those persons in power, why not? That is freedom of expression. So if you can allow me, because this question is to Chairman, please. Chairman, I want to ask you a <laughs> Yeah. I hope you are a journalist. Um, then it, this question will be to you. Okay. So as Brother Ashok Sani said, that it is journalists who have put the life of Taslima Nasreen in, pro, I mean, say, in problem because of irresponsible behavior. And we see that this journalist, they often they do irresponsible things. So what is the punishment to such irresponsible journalist in your society of journalists? Because of their irresponsibility, many problems are created in this country. So what punishment is there for those type of people in your society of journalists? I am a journalist by profession, but here I am a chairman, and chairman always says no comment. So that is my reply. Uh, anyone is is there to be a vote of thanks or what is the procedure now? Uh, I think uh, we had had uh, it's it's already 6:15 and. Uh, uh, the, the, the
Pardon? What about the um, uh, the the? Ah, no, one last question on karma because I think now being um, Indians, you know, we are so fond of karma. It's better to end with uh, <coughs> yes, last positively answer. Yeah, पहला निवेदन ये है कि हिंदू धर्म शास्त्रों में दलित नाम का कोई शब्द नहीं है ये अंग्रेजों का दिया हुआ डिप्रेस का अनुवाद के रूप में चल पड़ा है हमारे यहाँ भाइयों के समान एक बड़ा भाई एक छोटा भाई अग्रज और अंत्यज ये शब्द हमारे यहाँ चल रहे हैं अब रही बात ये कि उनका क्या कर्म है माने आप अगर ये जानना चाहें ब्राह्मणों क्षत्रियों वैश्यों शूद्रों इन सब के अलग अलग क्या कर्म होते हैं तो मैं संक्षेप में इतना ही कहूंगा कि कुछ धर्म या कुछ कर्म ऐसे हैं जो मानव मात्र के लिए समान है धृति क्षमा दमह अस्तेयम शौचम इंद्रिय निग्रह इस प्रकार के मनु के बटलाए हुए कुछ धर्म ऐसे मानव मात्र के समान है फिर कुछ कर्म ऐसे होते हैं जो एक एक व्यक्ति के लिए अलग अलग हो सकते हैं वो एक एक व्यक्ति के लिए अलग अलग कर्म हो सकते हैं उनको कृपा करके आप इस दृष्टि से नहीं देखें कि ये छोटा है या ये बड़ा है ये अच्छा है या ये बुरा है ये सम्मानजनक है या अपमानजनक है समाज के धारण के लिए सभी के सभी कर्म परम आवश्यक होते हैं समाज के धारण के कोई कर्म ऐसा नहीं है जो अनावश्यक हो या जिसको हम छोटा या अपमानजनक समझें एक बात मैं और कहना चाहूंगा मैं एक वैद्य हूं किसी भी हॉस्पिटल में किसी भी दवाखाने में मैं केवल दो तीन मिनट लूंगा किसी भी हॉस्पिटल में या किसी भी दवाखाने में ये व्यवस्था नहीं होती कि पेशेंट जाए और अपने आप दवा चुन दे सब जगह यह होता है कि पेशेंट को जाकर किसी डॉक्टर के सामने अपने को पेश करना पड़ता है डॉक्टर उसका निदान करता है और वो उसको बतलाता है कि तुम इस दवा से अच्छे हो गए ये दवा तुम लो हिंदू धर्म में ठीक यही व्यवस्था है हमारे यहाँ जो आप अपने मन से जो करना चाहें वो आप कर लें वो आपके लिए धर्म हो जाएगा और उसका आपको अच्छा फल मिल जाएगा ये नहीं हो सकता आपके लिए क्या कर्म है ये आपका धर्मशास्त्र आपको बतलाएगा वो कर्म करने पर ही आपको अच्छा फल मिलेगा इसमें जिसको बंधन लगता हो इसमें जिसको अपमान लगता हो इसमें जिसको धर्मशास्त्र के प्रति द्वेष उत्पन्न होता हो मेरी दृष्टि से वे गलती पर हैं वे भूल कर रहे हैं क्योंकि अगर वैद्य के नाते फिर मैं एक उदाहरण दूंगा मेरे पास चार रोगी आते हूं एक को मैं गोली देता हूं एक को काढ़ा देता हूं एक को मैं कड़वी दवा देता हूं एक को मैं चाटने की चौना पड़ा जैसी मीठी चीज दे देता हूं अगर जब तक मेरी नीयत साफ है कि चारों के रोग दूर करने के लिए मैं प्रयत्न कर रहा हूं जिसका रोग गोली से दूर होगा उसको गोली देता हूं जिसका काढ़े से होगा उसको काढ़ा देता हूं जिसको चौना प्राश से होगा उसको चौन प्राश देता हूं जब तक मेरी नीयत साफ है मैं सबको अच्छा करना चाहता हूं तब तक आप मुझ पर पक्षपात का आरोप नहीं लगा सकते कि उसको आपने चाचन दिया और मुझको काढ़ा क्यों दे रहे हैं मेरी नियत खराब हो तो आप दोष लगा सकते हैं धर्मशास्त्र या ईश्वर के नियत में हम कोई खराबी नहीं मान सकते इसलिए किसका कल्याण किस कर्म से होगा ये ईश्वर और उनके बाद ऋषियों ने जो हमें बताया है उस पर विश्वास करने से ही हमारा कल्याण हो सकता है मनमाना हम कुछ का कर्म करके ये चाहें कि हमारा कल्याण हो जाएगा तो वैसे ही होगा कि आप एक ऐसा हॉस्पिटल खोल दीजिए सब दवाइयां पड़ी हैं रोगी आए कोई भी दवा ले और चला जाए क्या परिस्थिति होगी आप सोच लीजिए माने आप मेरे नहीं पूछ रहे ना उस कर्म को जी इस प्रश्न का उत्तर मैं देने को तैयार हूँ उसके बारे में एक चीज जान लूंगा कि क्या आपने मेरे बारे में जान रखा है कि मैं कौन सा कर्म करता हूँ या नहीं करता अच्छा दूसरा ये कि ये जानने मान लीजिए एक बात मैं बता दूं अगर मैं उन कर्मों को ठीक से कर रहा हूं तो मेरा कल्याण होगा अगर मैं उन कर्मों को ठीक से नहीं कर रहा हूं तो मेरा अकल्याण होगा इससे ज्यादा जानकर आप या ये सभा क्या करेगी ना बस नहीं वैसे मैं बता दूं वैसे मैं बता दूं हम लोग आस्तिक हो एक एक मिनट एक मिनट केवल आस्तिक होने का दावा करते हैं हम ये क्लेम करते हैं कि हम धर्मशास्त्रों के एक एक अक्षर पर विश्वास करते हैं और अधिक से अधिक पालन करने का प्रयत्न करते हैं शतम प्रतिशत पालन करने का दावा मैं समझता हूं इस युग में कोई नहीं कर सकता पर मैं व्यक्तिगत रूप से अधिक से अधिक पालन करने का प्रयत्न करता हूं ये आश्वासन आपको देना चाहता हूं ब्राह्मण के धर्म है यज्ञ करना यज्ञ कराना अध्ययन करना अध्यापन करना 
दान और कथित अच्छा कर्म जो ब्राह्मण के बताए गए हैं उन सबको मैं अपनी ओर से अधिक से अधिक प्रयत्न करके कर रहा हूँ ये मैं आपको विश्वास दिला देता हूँ पर यदि मैं नहीं कर रहा हूँ तो मेरा दोष है हिंदू धर्म शास्त्र का नहीं इसका फल मुझे मिलेगा हिंदू धर्म शास्त्र को नहीं और किसी को नहीं मैं समझता हूँ इतने से आपको संतोष होना चाहिए दिस इज पॉजिटिवली द लास्ट क्वेश्चन टू डॉक्टर जाकिर नाइक इट इज बीन कोटेड बाई तस्लीमा नसरी That woman is your tilt. You may go as you like. Do you like to have give any comment on this? Thank you. I do agree that Tasleem Anasreen, and I've read the controversial column in which she has mentioned that in the Quran it is mentioned that the woman are the tilt. Sorry, it is not the tilt. She has not mentioned that. That's what the Quran mentioned. She has mentioned that. For the husband, the woman is the farmland, not the tilth. The Quran mentions the tilth, but but it is approximately the same meaning. She has mentioned that it is mentioned in the Quran. She does not give the reference that for the husband, the wife is the farmland, and you can approach them when you like. Along with that, she has said that the women are considered as properties, and she quotes the Quran and saying Surah Imran that the woman, the gold, everything are possession. The woman. The children, the gold, and horses are the possession. Again, she is misquoting. She did not give the complete quotation. She was referring to Surah Imran, chapter number three, verse number fourteen, which says that the woman and sons, the woman and sons, and the gold and silver, and the horses branded for branded for excellence, and the farmland are possessions which a man is proud of. Which man is not proud of a good wife? Quran says women including wife and daughters and son which father is not proud of his son which husband should not be proud of his wife and which wife should not be proud of the husband if he is good so where is quran talking that as though they are properties and regarding the first question that quran mentions that the women are as farmlands she does not give the quotation where are you going to find in the full quran where does she mention where is it mentioned in the quran that wives Are considered as farmland. She is referring to Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number twenty-three. But for the exact answer, you have to refer to the previous verse, Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number two twenty-two, and then come to two twenty-three. Verse number two twenty-two quotes that when they ask thee concerning menstrual periods, I'm quoting the Quran. You can check it out. Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number two twenty-two. When they ask thee concerning menstrual periods, tell them. it's the hurt and pollution so do not approach your wife during the period approach them after they're clean and any doctor will tell you that if you have intercourse during menstrual period it will hurt the wife and besides it will cause certain diseases it will be harmful for the wife as well as for the husband so quran is very scientifically based telling do not approach your wife when during the menstrual courses and then the verse continues the next verse Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 223 says that your wife are like the tilt approach your tilt when you like and approach them in the way Allah has ordained you Quran is saying don't approach in the time of the menstrual period otherwise you have to be good to them whenever you like you can approach them whenever they like they can approach you so what's the harm in that she misquotes as though women are like property This verse is linked with the earlier verse talking about should wife be approached during menstrual period and the Quran says no it's a hurt and pollution for both hope that answers the question brother uh friends we had a very interesting oh i think we had enough i think we should stop now speech has said that uh, if anybody follows secularism there will be a problem he is representing sanatan uh, dham that means we want to say sanatan dham by the very nature is fundamentalist No, I can't allow this question because it's already way past time. So we all uh, sit. <laughs> well, since the learned uh, chairman, but make it a very brief answer. Uh, just we are talking about freedom of expression. There's no freedom of expression in Hong Kong. Please repeat your question. Uh, if you follow secularism, you won't be able to solve any problem. That means you are representing Sanatan Dham. That means with the opinion or the view of Sanatan Dham, you want to say that by the very nature, Sanatan Dham is fundamental. That means you want to go against secularism. Then how can you blame Muslim fundamentalism? There are three parts of this question. 
फर्स्टली फर्स्टली टू मिनट टू मिनट्स पर पार्ट ऑल राइट टू मिनट्स पर पार्ट थैंक यू आई थॉट टू मिनट ओल्ड क्वेश्चन फर्स्टली द सेक्युलरिज्म एट द एंटी वर्ड फॉर सेक्युलरिज्म इज नॉट फंडामेंटलिज्म द एंटी वर्ड फॉर सेक्युलरिज्म इज फ्रीजम to believe in god to believe in the world here after to believe in the principle that whatever we are doing here we have to answer somewhere this is the against uh, uh, principle against the secularism so if we accept this principle there will be solution for all problems if you don't accept this thing the problems will not be solved i never said that fundamentalism is the solution for all the questions pass one pass two i never criticize the muslim fundamentalism in the way it's being done if dr Uh, Zakir Naik is correct. The way in which he put the principles, the fundamentalism means that we should have faith and we should have knowledge of the fundamental principles of Islam and we should follow and practice it. Then I 101 percent agree with him. This type of fundamentalism, <laughs> this type of fundamentalism is always welcome. Uh, the unfortunate part is that many times every good thing is being misused. We should always know what is being misused. Whether Islam is misused, fundamentalism of Islam is being misused, or it is some, or, um, whether it is used properly or it is being misused. Anything can, even God can be misused. Even God can be misused. So the responsibility is of the person who is misusing the fundamentalism or misusing the religion. It's not the religion which is a block. It's not the fundamentalism in this definition which is a block. It is the misuse of religion and misuse of what will not be block. Misuse of democracy, you are knowing what is happening. Misuse of secularism, you are knowing what is happening. And what was the third part of your question? Uh, is it covered? Are you satisfied? Ah, yes. We are all. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming for this program. Uh, in case any of you all have any specific questions to ask any of the speakers, you are free to let this program end because I think everyone wants to go home. I wanted to say the same thing. Oh, very good. Thank you very much for attending. And